Hi, I am Dr. Vivek Shashindran, Consultant ENT Head and Neck Surgeon. Today, we would be talking about glue ear. This is otherwise known as middle ear with effusion, secretory otitis media. Now, what exactly is glue ear? This is a condition where you have accumulation of a fluid. It could be a serous or a glue-like fluid in the middle ear space. So, because of this accumulation of fluid, what happens is that it impairs the conduction of sound to the inner ear. So, as a result of which, you can present with hearing loss. So, this is probably one of the most common causes for hearing loss in the pediatric age group. So, many a times, children are brought to the hospital and the parents complain that the child does not respond to call or probably they need to repeat things over and again before the child is able to pick it up. The other common scenario is when the parents say that the child keeps the volumes, volume levels very high while watching television. Or sometimes the teachers would complain that the child is not attentive in school. So all these could be a pointer to the fact that the child is having hearing loss. Whereas in adults, the scenario is slightly different. The patients themselves can kind of pick up or notice the hearing loss. Now it can affect one ear or it could affect both ears. Now in the pediatric age group, generally it affects both the ears. Now whenever you have a child with a suspicious hearing loss, the first and foremost thing that we do is to examine the ear. And most of the times, if there is fluid behind the eardrum, it can be picked up by your routine ear examination. Now, it's always mandatory to rule out any nasal cause whenever you have a child with glue ear or fluid in the middle ear. Similarly, in adults, one needs to be cautious when you come across a patient with unilateral glue ear or secretory otitis media. You always need to rule out a nasal cause because any kind of mass lesions or growth in the nasal cavity could present as a hearing loss. So nasopharyngeal carcinoma, which is basically a cancerous growth, could present in such a way or for that matter, any other nasal mass could present with hearing loss. So always make it a point that your nose is evaluated whenever you have a unilateral secretory otitis media. Now you can actually confirm this with a battery of tests that is audiometry tests. So you can do a pure tone audiogram, a tympanogram, which will actually show you specific graph patterns, which would suggest that it's probably fluid in the ear. Now, once a diagnosis is made, now if you have associated nasal problems that has to be treated simultaneously, if it's an isolated secretory otitis media, you can treat it medically with nasal steroid sprays and antihistamines. In vast majority of the cases, so this is fairly common after an upper respiratory tract infection. So if you have something like flu-like symptoms, running nose, nasal congestion, associated with that, you can have blocking sensation in the ear, which could be a secretory otitis media. Usually it settles down with medical management or it's kind of settles down spontaneously in a matter of few weeks. Now, the problem is what happens if it doesn't resolve. So you have it persisting beyond three months. So in those kind of scenarios, you have a surgical option to it. Now, this is fairly a simple daycare procedure. It could also be carried out in the OPD. In the pediatric age group, we generally perform it with a little bit of sedation, whereas in the adults, it can be done as a local procedure. So what we do in this procedure, that is myringotomy and grome insertion. So what we do in this particular procedure is that we place a small incision over the eardrum and then drain out the fluid from the middle ear. So the results are usually immediate on table results. So immediately the patient will have recovery of his hearing. And at the same time, we place a small ventilation tube so as to ensure that the middle ear gets properly ventilated and all the fluid that is there in the ear drains out. And this tube usually falls out a few months later and the tympanic membrane heals on its own. Thank you so much.